950. You are appreciated. Thanks from everyone at the Progressive Voice of Minnesota, AM 950. Hi, this is Frank Brown, owner of Minuteman Press Uptown, Minnesota's only minority-owned union printing company. We have big news. We've moved to North Minneapolis. Why did you move? As a black business owner, I wanted to be part of the North Minneapolis community to provide jobs. Are there other reasons you moved there? We have bigger new equipment and outgrew the other location. What kind of new equipment do you have? We have new equipment that allows us to print quality signage and banners. We also have a new inkjet printer printing larger sheets, improving production efficiencies. Is the new location easy to find? It's not only easy to find, it's more convenient with plenty of parking. We are now located on Washington Avenue North off I-94 and the Dowling exit. So do you still print everything? We print more than everything. We have over 175 Google reviews with a five-star rating. Call 612-870-0777 or visit mpuptown.com. That's mpuptown.com. We print everything. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Cloudy tonight with a low of 24, then Saturday sunshine with a high of 35. Cafe Latte is unlike any restaurant you've ever experienced. Grab a tray and pick from their award-winning selections of soups, salads, sandwiches, and mouth-watering desserts. Cafe Latte, Victoria Street and Grand Avenue in St. Paul, or CafeLatte.com. Portions of the following program may be pre-recorded. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host, guest, random reptoid, or chupacabra may not necessarily reflect those of AM950 Radio, its affiliates, or its sponsors. <laughs> now, it's time to step into the unknown. <laughs> There are things people experience but never talk about. A shadow moving in the corner, flickering of the lights, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your experience, because this isn't just your story, this is our story. This is Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. And this is Ghost Box Radio on AM 950, where every night we talk about the paranormal, UFOlogy, Bigfoot, and so much more. My name is Greg Bach, and thank you very much for joining me. It's Casual Friday. You know what that means. It means that we can talk about whatever we want. We can go anywhere we want. We have question of the week that, boy, what a question it was this week. We're going to get to that in a little bit as well. But I also have with me tonight in studio, where I am not in studio, Mr. Adam, how are you tonight? Hello. We're all good. A little tired, but we're good. Other than that, very pleased to be on the air with you tonight and with all of our listeners here on AM 950 and Ghost Box Radio, wherever you may be tuning in at, as we so, appreciate the listeners. So here's the thing here that, yes. uh, that you know, I, I think people may know, may not know, it doesn't really matter, is is the fact like, you know, for example, you, you, got, a, you got a job that you're doing all day. And yes. then you come out here. So, I mean, it, it is, it is a lot, you know, it's a lot to, to put on you. So I can, I can totally understand when you get to Friday, you're kind of tired. But I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This show is beyond my therapy, man. I, I just let go of the day job that I'm not a big fan of and just kind of relax with you, our listeners. Uh, this to me is my, okay, I've made it through the week. I'm ready for the weekend. Let's talk some paranormal. Let's hang out with Greg for a bit. Let's hang out with all of these great listeners. I'm yeah, here. Absolutely. Now, I got to tell you something. I, I kind of laughed earlier uh, a couple days ago because what we weren't on last night. And uh, a couple days ago, I stopped into the station to pick up a check. And uh, when I got there, it was in the afternoon. And they're recording for Searching for Service, which airs here Sundays mm -hmm. at 3 to 4 every Sunday. And... Uh, I'll tell you, Adam, first of all, they're all dressed very nice. Yes, they okay. are. They, they're all dressed very nice. Ties. They had a guest in, a young lady who was in a nice dress. She looked great. Everyone there looked good. Chad was there. He looked really good. And, you know, I just find it funny, kind of the dichotomy between the daytime folks and then us, where it kind of looks like you and I were purchased from a garage sale. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's just like, like they, they are just, I mean, they look like that they were um, broadcasting in the 1950s. You know what I mean? If you ever see yeah. 
footage of people broadcasting back in the day that they're always wearing like you know even like the the engineers they're wearing ties and like oh yeah they got the suspenders the white button down shirts oh yeah absolutely and i just find it so funny and they just they look amazing please know this is not me ripping on anybody they looked great and they're all very you know professional ready to get it going here's the thing also adam all the lights were on downstairs wow the, the lights actually work down here so yes and that's that's something folks if you're watching the facebook feed and you're just like well what are you talking about we don't ever like i'm at home right now but we don't ever have the lights on when we do the show we really don't it might look like it on the camera if you look at what adam's doing right now it looks like it's well lit that's only because the the iris on that camera is like overcompensating or something there really isn't any lights on in there <laughs> no it's, it's actually kind of fun um, yeah i mean it's just like i mean the hallway lights we turn those off we turn off all the lights why would you have the lights on during this thing um you know that's purposely per but here they are they have all the lights on and it's like a bustle of activity and then you know the you know the the strange after school group comes in around 9 p.m you know the alternative ones you know the, the they they think we're the goth kids you know um and and just for you know just so you know too what i'm wearing right now is actually much nicer than what i was wearing when i went to the station i mean let's just be honest. I mean, you know, you and I, we don't wear clothes. We wear uniforms because we are always dressed in the same way, it, but it might be different sweatshirts and different hats, <laughs> but there is more of a uniform. Wouldn't you agree? It, it really is. It kind of, <laughs> and it, it, wearing all black, isn't really more of a choice. It's more of a black is slimming and I'm a fat guy. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I hate to say it, Adam. I'm looking at myself on this picture here, like from from home, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not looking so bad over here because I know the truth. You know, I know what I look like, and it's, this is this isn't it. I mean, this is looking really good for me. But the the fact, is, I mean, first of all, once again, we don't have lights on in here either, so that helps. Um, you know, as I always say, darkness is my friend, and uh, it's just, just kind of <laughs> just funny. It's well, just and funny. the light on this camera really, really brings out the gray down here. Really does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just, yeah, I don't, I mean, I've always keep meaning to look to see if we can get into that camera via the computer and see if we can kind of normalize that uh, iris a little bit because it's, it doesn't feel quite right, but you know, whatever. But you it's realize that would also ruin it for every other show <laughs> that uses it. Yeah, I'm sure you can understand. I have that doesn't bother me one bit, <laughs> right? That has really no that has no bearing on anything in my life. So <laughs> this is why we're the after dark show. <laughs> this is this is yeah. This is why this is why uh, they they put us on at at ten. This is why also paranormal shows didn't really work at four p.m. on a Sunday. It did work. I mean, obviously, it worked well enough. We got mm -hmm. to nightly, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, for a couple things here real fast. Uh, first of all, this whole month of February is Listener Appreciation Month at AM 950. And uh, it, it really is. I am so excited that we're doing something like this because uh, it really um, <clears throat> goes to show what you all mean to us. And uh, this is really cool to see kind of all the shows working together as well to create like uh, we're having like giveaways and stuff. So tonight we're going to be giving away. Uh, it's a set of tickets, a pair of tickets to the listener appreciation event that's going to happen February 13th. Uh, if you win, uh, if you win, and we'll tell you how to win in a second. If you win, we'll tell you where it is um, and uh, all that good stuff. But uh, so we're going to do that later tonight. And uh, also, I want to talk briefly about our big event, the Ghost Box Radio event, which is part of Listener Appreciation Month over at the Tilted Tiki at the Grand Garage in Stillwater. That's going to be February 21st. And what's really exciting about this, once again, we're going to be investigating the Grand Garage. Adam is going to be at the station. I'm going to be out to the Grand Garage, but we're going to do it differently this time. We are inviting you, the public, to come out to the Tilted Tiki, grab some dinner, get some food. There's no admission to get in, but we do ask that you get some food and support this wonderful business. And um, we're gonna. There's gonna be a big screen behind me that you can see the investigation. 
We're not letting everyone into the investigation. You can watch when we do the broadcast live, but we are going to pick one lucky person to join in the investigation that evening who, who turns up at uh, the Tilted Tiki. Uh, you can sh uh, show up there around 6 p.m. The show won't start until 8 p.m., but we're going to have Witch Jody there. She's going to be doing psychic readings, one-question readings for people there. Uh, we're going to have some giveaways. There's going to be uh, some uh, drinks with paranormal themes to them. It's going to be a lot of fun, Adam. I'm, I'm sorry that you're not going to be able to uh, come out to the Grand Garage, but your your role is extraordinarily important anyway. So, uh, And it's going to be nice to have you at the station again and, and deal with whatever comes alive over there. Yeah, um, I plan on bringing a little bit of equipment with me, and I will mm -hmm. be leaving it in your office afterwards because sure. I catch a plane after the show. Right, so, because because the the feds are on to you, and you got to escape. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta go. So um, I plan on bringing in my K two. I plan on bringing in my uh, rim pod that was graciously uh, purchased from uh, Brad Webb and Cracked Skull Paranormal. Check them out, their website, and plan on uh, probably uh, bring in my um, my brand new K2 as well. That's going to be a great. K2 at a radio station, though, may not make a whole lot of sense. No, but you could maybe have it uh, set up. Uh, it, did you get a holder with yours? Uh, yes, I do have a holder with it. Because maybe you can uh, put it into the, the studio, studio in front of you and you kind of keep your eye on and see if it lights up because no one should be in there. Yeah, and right. everything will be off in there that night. So Yeah. Yeah, and I see uh, Emily. She she she's hopefully going to be there. That'd be great to to have you there as well. Any everyone's welcome. Uh, just it's uh, going to be it's going to be really fun. It's coming up fast. Uh, but anyone who's been to the Tilted Tiki will know that it's an extraordinary fun location. It's also great food, uh, good drinks, strong drinks. <laughs> which I have no problem with whatsoever. There's a pineapple. I think it's called the pineapple bomb or something like that. And it, I like that. That was, that was uh, the night that I went out to Midwest witchery and healing for uh, Jay Ryan doing his seance. Uh, I had uh, one before it and one after, and I, I was enjoying life. That was, that was a good time. <laughs> that was really, really nice. So yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And um, also want to thank, Obviously, the Tilted Tiki, uh, Chris out there, thank you very much for that, as well as Midwest Witchery and Healing, who has always been such an amazing sponsor uh, for us. And Witch Jody, when I talked to her this week, talking with her about the event, it's just like, let's just do it. Let's have a great time. Uh, and we're going to be able to showcase her space a little bit more. And I believe that we're going to have, as we did last time, a uh, locale maker's market, um, which uh, had some of the best evidence. That, was uh, that night so yeah it's going to be great and folks if you think about it um please go out there regardless when we're out there and please support these wonderful businesses who you know once again as we talked about before adam when after halloween these people gave up their night their halloween night to hang out with us uh I, chris actually i think he wanted to go visit his uh his grandkids you know but they just they were so interested in what we were doing that they hung around the entire night and they had a great time and that's why they invited us back because they just thought it was a great evening it was a wonderful evening great evidence just a wonderful show all the way around and for it to come together like it did uh i can only expect more of the same and in fact maybe even a little bit better this time around because you're not going to be in there really for a first time no. Any of the lingering uh, spirits there will kind of know you at this point. So second time around, uh, I'm very much looking forward to this. And that's coming up on Wednesday, the 21st, correct? That's correct. And uh, right. we so we're going to be preempting some programs. I believe that we start at 8 p.m. on the air. If you wanted to come out to the live event, uh, I believe we start that at six, you know, get you some, get you in there, get you to order some food and some drinks. And uh, there's a stage set up that we're going to be set up for the radio portion part. And then throughout the rest of the building, we're going to have uh, such wonderful people as Shar, we're going to have our friend Kyle. Uh, we're going to have uh, the people who like, obviously, uh, Witch Jody. And it's just going to be a fantastic um just a fantastic day. And, and thank you, Emily, for reminding me it is, it is which Jody's birthday today. 
So happy birthday, uh, Witch Jody. Really appreciate everything you do for us. It's it's great. Also, uh, just I have to say this. I it's we've been running commercials for a week for it, but I I, I have to say it because I'm so happy is that Mavericks is a sponsor of us now, Mavericks Roast Beef Sandwiches. And uh, I, I'm so excited because I hope, I truly hope that people hear the commercials and they want to go out there and try it because if you like a roast beef sandwich or even more, Adam, the food at this place is phenomenal. I got to get out there. We got to roll out there one day. Yeah, I told you. Let's let's figure out a time. Let's figure out a day, and uh, I'll come by, pick you up. We'll drive out to Roseville, and uh, you know, if actually, if anyone's interested, um, let me know. Maybe we can get like a few people to head on down there and uh, uh, just uh, show Tim over there that we really appreciate that. You know, people who make good food and put a lot of effort into it. That uh, that is not uh, that is not. Uh, you know, taken for granted. Get a nice little GBR uh, appreciation going on ourselves. Yeah, right. I mean, truly. I mean, it's it's just y'all got to pay for yourselves. Oh yeah, yeah, no kidding. I mean, there's. I mean, I mean, Adam. You see how we dress? Yeah, I was gonna say. Look at look at Adam. I mean, that's that's. No, there's no. He's not gonna pay for us. <laughs> Ask my wife. I don't open my wallet for anything. No, no. I just. It's just like no. This is this is. Uh, you know. Anyway, we only we only deal with counterfeit money. Anyway, that's just kind of how that works. Um, we have a great, uh, we have a really good question of the week uh, that Adam uh, pushed my way, and uh, we're we're gonna talk about that. We have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. We're gonna get into paranormal when we get back. We're gonna take our first break. We're gonna be talking about songs that can that can connect you to spirit. It's a fantastic question. We got a lot of responses. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM nine fifty. If you own a holistic or metaphysical business and are looking to expand, then you need to be listed on metamorphosisconnections.com. It's a network where you can grow with like-minded practitioners and reach new clients. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory you need to list yourself and your business. Our platform makes it easy for you to create listings of your products and services, and you can also choose to list your classes, events, and so much more. MetamorphosisConnections.com helps you create weekly and monthly promotional ads targeted towards your potential clients and promotes them for you via social media and newsletter. There are clients searching for your specialty right now. Let us help them find you. Start your listing today so you can share your own unique gifts and talents by finding the level of membership that best fits your needs. Let us help you reach your clients that are searching for what you do. Visit metamorphosisconnections.com and sign up today. Twin Cities Pagan Pride is thrilled to host Paganicon 2024, March 15th through the 17th at the Crown Plaza Minneapolis West Hotel. Come to Paganicon to experience deep community where people gather to learn, socialize, and get inspired. Check out all the featured guests and lists of activity at tcpaganpride.org. Plus, register now to take advantage of the weekend discount in effect until February 18th. Paganicon is a pagan conference offering workshops, panels, discussions, social space, music, a ball, vendors, and much more. Paganicon is an educational and social venue for pagans, Wiccans, heathens, druids, people of other folk, craft, indigenous, and magical traditions. Come to Paganicon to experience deep community where people gather to learn, socialize, and get inspired. Paganicon is a safe place, not only to be yourself, but to meet other like-minded individuals. Register now to take advantage of the weekend discount in effect until February 18th. Go to TC Pagan Pride and click on Paganicon to register and get more details. Hello, I'm Jody, also known as Witch Jody on social media. I opened Midwest Witchery and Healing in historic Stillwater because as a nurse, I love to help others. When you come and visit Midwest Witchery and Healing, you will find everything from divination and magical services, classes to ritual tools, jewelry, handcrafted candles, witchy gear, and much more. My store is a safe environment for all on their own unique path. Look for the purple door. Find out more at MidwestWitcheryHealing.com. And welcome back to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. I, my name is Greg Bach, and thank you very much for joining us. We are going to be going into question of the week here in a moment. But uh, a couple things here real fast. We are giving away tickets 
to uh, our listener appreciation uh, our listener appreciation event on February 13th. Uh, why don't you give us a call if you'd like tickets? You have to be local, though. Give us a call, 952-946-6205. That's 952-946-6205. And Adam will uh, take your name and everything else, and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, good luck, everyone. would love to see you at this event. Uh, this is... Uh, this is uh, going to be, I think it's going to be a fun, uh, a fun evening. So uh, to give us a call, 952-946-6205. Uh, we're going to be, uh, well, first of all, I want to back up here a second. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I uh, Not how I wanted it. Um, Linda does say, uh, hey, Greg, I didn't know that Adam did investigations. And, uh, well, you just started doing them. Yeah, I just started. I'm a greenhorn. If you, you know, those who watch Deadliest Catch. Yeah, well, and uh, you just had you did the one in September, right? Right. And then I plan on hoping hitting up a couple more events this year. Well, hopefully, so that should be good. Um, let's see here. The question of the week is uh, that. Uh, let me grab down to that real fast. We had a lot of people reach out. Now, Adam found this. Adam, where did you find this question? I actually came across it on Reddit and it's just like, oh my God, that would be a great question to ask folks. So the question is tonight, folks, and if you did not answer, you can call in and you can, uh, you can let us know what you think. You can also uh, put it into the comments as well. Um, and Linda also says she's so glad that you're interested in paranormal. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why we have Adam here because, and that's why Adam likes doing the show because he's deeply into the paranormal. Um, so the question is this week, is it possible for a song to connect you to spirits? And if so, do you have any examples? Very, very interesting question. And, you know, I, I, some of the answers here get into areas that make a lot of sense. You know, uh, Chuck says, I'm sure certain songs could be, uh, bring past loved ones in. It's our minds and our dreams. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's see, Todd he is talking about, uh, you know, like, uh, he said the song Spirit in the Sky always makes me think about dying and spirits in the sky. Also, 4-4 four, four time, reverb, echo, distortion, and whammy bars. It's uh, like one big out-of-body experience every time without the mushrooms. Now, the thing is about um, what he says there, which I think is very interesting, is I wonder if sometimes depending on what you're trying to do if like four four time you, you know just like the the timing of the songs the beat how quickly it goes does that have an impact on when you bring how you can bring spirits in or is it an emotional connection i think it could be anything in my opinion uh i, I wanted to kind of say real fast when i i was out in saint anthony this week which is which is where i grew up saint anthony village i was out in saint anthony village and i uh ended up um, going to see my parents. My parents had passed, um, and so I went to Hillside Cemetery. And I go into uh, Hillside, and I go and visit them. And I don't personally believe that I need to be, like, right there to, to talk to them. I think, you know, spirit is everywhere. But I'm in the area. I haven't been to their, uh, I haven't been to their uh, grave in actually quite some time, and I was in the area, so I went over there. When I got in my car, I went to Catholic school when I was a kid and this, uh, this song just popped out of nowhere and it's been with me ever since. And that song is on Eagle's wings. And I, I not heard that in so long. And it just, I, like I said, I, I, I found it on Spotify. I started listening to it and it's just been with me everything ever, ever, ever since. And uh, it's, it's also uh, the song, uh, Be Not Afraid. And I'm not someone who's going to be uh, like looking like for religious songs. It's just not me. It's just very simply not me. Uh, so I, I just, I find that really, very interesting. Um, I, I want, I'm going to read one more and then we have a caller. Uh, let's see here. Um, Lisa says, I think it's possible, especially if the song had meaning during life. My mom used to sing You Are My Sunshine to us kids when we were little. I sang it to her the day before she passed. 
Last weekend, I was thinking about her, and I heard the song while shopping in a little boutique store. Coincidence? Maybe. Or maybe that was her way of letting me know she's around. You know, and I always think that it's interesting that uh, you have people, like, like, if it resonates to you, how can that be coincidence? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'd like to think maybe because, I, and I think, Adam, you're probably the same way. You want to think that there's these connections. And so if someone said to me, do you think it's a coincidence? I'd be like, no, that was her. That's my take on it, at least. There's too much to be said about coincidences when something random happens. And it, it sparks your memory or makes you even feel the presence of someone around you Yeah, that isn't there. Uh, once again, folks, uh, if you want to answer, you can put uh, you can put something in the comments or you can go to the phone. Give us a call. 952-946-6205. 952-946-6205. That's where we go right now. We have Emily on the phone. How are you tonight, Emily? I'm good. Hey, Greg, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm super good. I'm sorry. You can probably, my toddler's being super spicy right now. So you might hear I'm running around a bit. I apologize. No problem. <laughs> so what, what you got so for us? I think, I think I have a pretty good answer to your question. Although I think other people probably have way better answers, but I think I have a pretty good one. It's okay. It's not a competition. That's or true. is it? Or is it? No, go ahead. Maybe what, it is. I don't maybe, know. I'll, I'll let you know when I hear the answer, if it's a competition. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good. I'll win respect. And you know what? I'm cool with that. All right. <laughs> so what you got? So, I think, I think music connects all people to spirit in sort of um, the most broadest sense, right? Because I would say almost universally people, when they listen to a certain song or a certain type of music, everyone, every single one of us has experienced a sort of chill down our spine when a certain song comes on or we've all experienced that. And I think we as humans are meant for music. I mean, we're meant for joy and art and creating. And even though we sort of live in a crazy chaotic time and it's all about hustle and bustle, that spark is still within us. So when we hear music, we have that connection that we don't necessarily understand, but that is like the most purest connection to spirit i think mm -hmm. that's that's really interesting i you know because i think because I, I i personally think that there's two ways about this right that uh, one is just the like the generic frequency does stuff to us and it it it, it connects us and that we react to certain types of frequencies uh some will make us more aggressive some will give us feelings of love and stuff but i do think there's that sentimental part of it as well such as kind of what you're saying and what lisa said with her mom that she's hearing this this music um and the song that meant so much that that's a way as a callback to somebody to know that their loved ones is are paying attention to them you know yeah, yeah, and and it's that it's I, I really do believe it's universal cross culturally, everything. I think we all kind of have some experience because there's definitely songs that will make us feel angry or songs that will make us sad, but it sparks something within us, absolutely. and it always has, and I think it always will. Absolutely, absolutely. That's 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 exactly what I think too. I appreciate I appreciate the call very much, Emily. I'd say I hope you have yourself a very good weekend. Hey, you too. I'll see you soon, Greg. That sounds good. Okay, take care. So with that, I mean, absolutely. I mean, and I appreciate that call. That's that's very much. I agree. Uh, Danielle says, ever since my mom died, I've heard a ton of Elton John. She loved his music. Um, that is, I mean, that is just it. And for me, when my dad passed, there's a, there's a Johnny Cash song, uh, Sunday morning coming down. I always, uh, I remember him, uh, having that playing in the bath bathroom when he's getting ready and stuff. And, you know, it's just, you know, when we're getting ready for church, you, you know, this, having this, you know, song that's, you know, the beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad. So I had one more for dessert, you know, that's the kind of stuff we grew up with. And, uh, you know, I just, there was, there was, I was thinking about him. And uh, was at the Palmer House, actually, up in uh, Sock, Rap Sock Center, excuse me. And they had, uh, I've never been there when they had anyone play music live there. And uh, the guy was there, 
he was uh he was uh playing music and he he played sunday morning coming down and that was very emotional for me and i look over and the guy at the bar is wearing a hat that was for the 82nd airborne which was what my dad was in which i never seen that and it was just like wow that's a that's a double whammy and uh that was that was pretty incredible that was that was really good and like lisa is that a coincidence i don't think so i don't think so at all and that was actually uh from the year that he had uh he had passed so it was still very very uh very rough um char as you may have heard on such programs as this one she had written uh yes i've had several experiences my favorite was talking about my grandparents and their love story especially how much my grandma loved uh my grandpa loved my grandma I got in my car and I said, I hope I got that right. You know, she's just like saying it, putting it out there. Um, she turned on the radio and it was in a station. It was at a station that she didn't normally listen to. The song was My Sweet Lorraine. I have never heard that song before. That was my grandma's name. I knew my grandpa had a hand in that happening. That's uh, that's pretty cool. That is <laughs> that is really neat. Um <clears throat> Now, I, some people gave me some joke ones as well, and uh, that I mean, and, and that's fine. Uh, and, and it wasn't meant in, in rudeness or anything. But uh, uh, we had someone who put down Ghostbusters. Uh, that that was, you know, come on. And uh, and the only reason why, and I, Adam and I were talking about that uh, before the program. Um, Ghostbusters. When I'm talking about paranormal stuff. Ghostbusters, the song Ghostbusters, which I love the song, I love the movie, it's a trigger for me when I'm actually talking about paranormal. I have a sense of humor. I hope you've seen it before. It's just when it's that, I'm kind of like, ooh, you know, because it to me, it's kind of taking the Mickey out of it, even though the person who put it there did not mean it that way. It's just one of those things that's like, uh, you know, because it's there, you couldn't be further from from that as as adam you've experienced doing an investigation oh yeah there's nothing peter vinkman about doing an actual investigation you're not you don't have proto packs you're not you know beware of crossing the streams it's an actual serious thing yeah and i, I kind of wish more people took that route to it as opposed to hey it's a good time let's chug back a couple of, you know, drinky poos and go do this. No, this, you are messing with people. You are talking to people. You may not be able to see them, but treat them as you would want to be treated. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, why I get your point with the Ghostbusters. Like, no, stop. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, as I, I often said, it's stuff like that is a little too on the nose and uh, it just, uh, and, and once again, the person who put that there did not mean it in any uh to to be like that it just i was just like oh you know that that song you know <laughs> a lot of paranormal investigators love it they they love they love to be uh considered that as well and stuff don't get me wrong it's just that for me personally it's it's a bit of a trigger but that that's okay everyone has theirs uh let's see jolene says uh, regarding once again, folks, uh, the, the question of the week is simply this, is it possible for a song to connect you to spirits? If so, do you have any examples? And so Jolene says, yes, also the native American traditions use music to create certain, uh, to create certain, uh, she wrote churches also. I don't think that's what she meant. Um, if you want a song used to communicate spirits, uh, Mary Ra is an Ira uh, Mangian uh, genre used in rituals to communicate, uh, which I think is it's it's really it's like when I read that, I'm like, duh, of course, of course. I don't know why I didn't even think about that. Um, Chloe writes uh, last year, our team went to Edinburgh uh, Manor for a two night stay. Um, that's one place I haven't been to yet. Uh, we went a week after I saw uh, NF in concert at the Target Center. Uh, things were not going great with myself, and I was feeling a little down. I went into Susie's room during the day and played the song Happy by NF. Adam, do you know what NF is? I have no idea who okay. NF is. I was going to ask you. Yeah, no, I don't know what it is. Is that like a group? And because we are fossil fuel that uh, we don't even know anything anymore. I mean, I... <laughs> 
<laughs> my daughter's starting to get me into some of her music so I, and I, i'm 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 never one to be like ah music now that's ridiculous i just can't keep up that's all I, yeah I, the, the same way i am i just couldn't keep up i just kind of stopped when i turned like 15 or 16 it's like okay we're good yeah yeah so chloe she went into Susie's room during the day and played the song happy by nf just because and that's that's a room in the manor uh, later that night, we were doing a spirit box session in the same room. The spirit box started playing the same song I played earlier. You know how spirit boxes sweep? I'm, I'm a little familiar yeah. with that. Uh, it stopped and played almost the full chorus, which is impossible for a spirit box to to have that through. Us, or not. Uh, it, it's highly improbable. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, paranormal? I don't know. But I thought it was pretty cool. That is pretty cool, actually. That's very cool, especially if it's going to get the chorus and it's just like sweeping like that. That's something kind of rolling through if if that's, you know, the message they're wanting to get across. And well, if the song is called Happy, I imagine that's a, a heck of a good message to kind of uh, pass through. I don't know. I mean, I mean, let's 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 uh, see here. Uh, let's just NF NF songs. Uh, it's, it's American rapper and singer NF. Okay. Right you on. can follow him on X at at NF Real Music. All right. Right on. I'll ask I, my daughter when I get home if she knows who that is. It's yeah. It's 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 really interesting. And you know, once again, you know, had a couple more uh, people being hilarious. Uh, one guy is like, "Well, Coldplay always makes me reach for the nearest bottle of scotch." I nearly fell off my chair laughing at that. You know, can you imagine? Ha <laughs> ha. So I can't imagine listening to Coldplay. Well, you know, that's just it. Amy says, when I did a distant Reiki for friends, uh, she said, I would always ask their favorite song in the whole world and use that to connect to them better. I would play it while working on them. That makes sense. That, that works. Really does, yeah. Uh, Suzanne says, uh, uh, let's see. I remember singing the Palmer Basement and Spirits favorably. Uh, good times. Yeah. Um, we also did, um, we're going to go to break here in a minute, but we also did at the, remind me at the Mounds Theater. You know, uh, there's this thing where we would do this thing. You know, the song "Happy." If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, mm -hmm. because there is a, a little girl spirit at the Mounds. Oh, right on. And we played. I think we played uh, those EVPs before, where I had at one of our investigations. We have this little girl. She actually sings the song during the EVP. Um, have Have we played that on here at all? Not happen? since we've gone weeknights. Maybe during I remember, break. I remember that on a Sunday show, but I don't think we've played that on a weeknight show. Maybe during uh, break, I can find it real fast. Um, but uh, we did it once, where they the people in the they the the group was in the audience area of the theater, and someone was in kind of the wings, and uh, they all were singing, "If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands." And the person in the wings heard right next to her. Oh wow! Which that that's that's very Conjuring esque, you know. That remember that scene in the Conjuring where uh, they're they're doing the kind of clap if you're if you're nearby. Oh God, yeah, that's what that reminds me of. And that's like even if it's a little girl, no thank you, no thank I, you to that. I didn't even think about that when you were telling that. I didn't even think about that. Oh my, yeah, that is kind of spooky though. But also uh, it's cool, you know. In the, uh, no, it is. It is very cool. Why don't we do this? Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll do more of question of the week. I'll see if I can find that EVP. Uh, hopefully it, it translates well over air uh, and we got more to go to. And don't forget, you can have your chance to win uh, tickets. You call in this 952-946-6205. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with metamorphosisconnections.com. MetamorphosisConnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search MetamorphosisConnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. 
Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. Magus Books, your multicultural spiritual supply store. Stop in and expand your horizons with books, classes, readings, and supplies at magusbooks.com or in our shop at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis. From the best incense to beautiful statues, we have supplies and books for your spiritual explorations. Come in and chat with our knowledgeable staff and get what you need for your next adventure, whether you're fighting ghosts or opening your third eye. Check us out today at magusbooks.com. Hello, I'm Jody, also known as Witch Jody on social media. I opened Midwest Witchery and Healing in historic Stillwater because as a nurse, I love to help others. When you come and visit Midwest Witchery and Healing, you will find everything from divination and magical services, classes to ritual tools, jewelries, handcrafted candles, witchy gear, and much more. My store is a safe environment for all on their own unique path. Look for the purple door. Find out more at MidwestWitcheryHealing.com. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Cloudy tonight with a low of 24, then Saturday sunshine with a high of 35. The Randy Rainbow for President Tour is coming to the State Theater in Minneapolis on Friday night, February 23rd. Don't miss out on this great event. Get your tickets at randyrainbow.com. And join me Monday on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken as we're going to have on our guest, author Heidi Hollis. Uh, she is an author. She's written many books. One of them is about shadow people. We're going to be talking with her about that on uh, Monday. And if we have time today, I'll tell you about my favorite uh, shadow person uh, interaction, I guess, uh, from many, many years ago at the Bliska Axe Murder House if we can get around to that. I mean, we have a lot of stuff to get through first as well. Don't forget, folks, if you'd like to get tickets to uh, go to our listener appreciation event this coming Tuesday, February 13th, got to be local or, you know, nearby, uh, give us a call, 952-946-6205. Myself and other hosts of AM950 are going to be there. Uh, don't let that scare you away. It's still going to be a good time. So uh, definitely, uh, please give us a call and, and win tickets. Now, before we get back to the question of the week, and once again, the question of the week is, uh, if you, you know, do you think uh, music can connect you to spirit? Um, I found that uh, audio... And I don't know, I'm going to, because I'll see if I can uh, raise it over here, the volume. It's um, talking about a, a little girl singing, if you're happy and you know it, and you can hear her say a bunch of other things. Now, you're going to hear some people on a microphone. That's part of the event. But what you hear in the background, this little girl, there was no little girl at the Mounds Theater. And uh, it's uh, pretty, it's pretty cool. Here, uh, take a listen. Jim, did you enjoy your job here? Thank you for your service, by the way. So, Adam, did you hear that? Yeah, you could hear a little girl in the background of that, uh, underneath that guy's voice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's just it. And you can hear her, you can hear her sing happy and, you know, clap your hands. It, it's an, it's incredible. It, we, we, we veered a little bit away from, uh, the question here, but, uh, it's still, it's still pretty incredible. Uh, going to our, um, uh, uh, Linda says, I heard some singing was that the little girl. Yes, that was the little girl. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, and Chuck's like goosebumps and I'm like, yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's something. That's for sure. It really is. Um, that was I did not capture that myself. It was at an event that I ran, but uh, our our friend uh, she was there. One of her first investigations she ever been to, and she picked up that audio first time she ever did it, and she got that. So that was uh, that was pretty incredible. Uh, Lynette says my mom loved Elvis, so every time I hear him, I of course think of her. 
Also, the day after she passed, I lived in Minneapolis at the time, and there was a nearby church that was playing an Elvis song with their recorded bell music from the tower, which was playing an Elvis Christmas song instrumental. I never heard that before or since from the church. Isn't that something? That's beyond coincidence. That one's cool. That is very cool. You know, and, and what's also interesting about that, too, is just that, you know, it's for Elvis is just if you ever listen to any of his uh, gospel singing, it's just incredible. And oh, what a voice. Yeah. He was one of my mother's favorites, too. I dug Elvis. She my mom was lucky enough. She actually got to go to his last arena show at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Oh, before wow. he passed a few days later. And she actually had in her possession an unbroken ticket stub because they used to have to break the tickets when you mm. go in. One of her friends bailed at the last minute. So she actually had an unused ticket stub for the longest time of Elvis Presley's last arena show. Oh, did, did she just, was it just get lost in time then or something? It eventually or? got burnt up in a fire at their oh. house years and years later, but. Oh. Yeah, I thought that was one of the neatest things that she possessed was that unbroken Elvis Presley ticket. Wow, that's that's uh, that's incredible. Uh, once again, the question of the week is, is it possible for a song to connect you to spirits? If so, do you have any examples? We go back down to uh, some, what some people have put into Facebook. Uh, let's see. Uh, John says uh, the Sherman brothers often told the story and this is they they were the ones who composed a lot of Walt Disney's uh, music in the 60s such as it's a small world and a lot of the songs I think for Mary Poppins and stuff the Sherman brothers often told the story of feed the birds the song feed the birds and how they could feel Walt Disney's presence in the room whenever they played it and Adam can I just say that this one comment by John here was more informative than our Disney guy that we had on last year I just really feel like that's we need to we need to make the sure that everyone understands that you made the smart ass comment before I did <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, wow, that is the most interesting Disney haunt I've ever heard. That, that's actually legit, unlike what we got last year. Boy, I would. Oh, we got a pencil. Oh, wait. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I I've, I knew everybody in, that ever worked at Walt Disney. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Susie <laughs> says, uh, I think so. Not listen to connect, but there are songs I hear and know someone from the other side is making a connection. Here's a story. There was a girl I went to junior high with. Her yearbook quote was, I don't want to start any blasphemous rumors, but I think that God has a sick sense of humor. And when I die, I accept to find him. I expect to find him laughing. The Pesh mode. mode. I was going to say, Depeche isn't mode. it a Pesh Mode song? Yep. <laughs> on, on her graduation day. Okay. So we, let's get the laughter all the way here from oh, the, okay. we understood it. On her graduation day, she was killed when hit by a car crossing the street. The, ru the rumor was that it was suicide. We were not really friends, but I think of her whenever I hear that song. One day it came on the radio, and I hear it wasn't suicide, but I'm glad someone still thinks of me when they hear that song. That, that's that's chills. That's yeah, that is that is um, that's incredible. Thank you for sharing that extraordinarily yeah. personal uh, piece with me, with us on that. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's incredible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's figure out here. Lance, for me personally, James Horner's brilliant piece for Spock Dies and Wrath of Khan is up there for me. I don't know if Lance understood the question. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, maybe Spock comes to him. That or you know maybe Lance saw the movie with someone at that time who meant a lot to him, and that's the moment that brings that back. You, you, what is the what is the quote? You are and always shall be my friend. That's Out of all the souls I have met in this entire galaxy, his was the most. <laughs> wait for it, human. But you don't have to be a Star Trek fan to like Wrath of Khan. No, no, you don't. And and James Horner music, because uh, he did it for Star Trek two and three. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I think it's the best of of them all. Oh, um, absolutely. For, they got rid of the over modulated Rottenberry music and put in some good music. Though I do think uh, Star Trek six is probably my favorite of the films. 
to be honest. I like Voyage Home the best. I, I it's been years. I'll have to see it again. I'll it's have to watch the whales. Yeah, no, I know, I, I know, okay. I know which one it is. <laughs> All right, <okay. laughs> I, but I just it's been a it's been a long because that seems so normal, you know. It just seems so, but you know, that's it, it's that's what made it popular. I think that's what made it made it really good. And the last two movies before that were so heavily. They, there's just so much going on. It was mm -hmm. very. I mean, they needed a break. They definitely well, needed a break. Voyage Home always has a place in my heart. Uh, two of my aunts that have passed. That was the first Star Trek flick I saw in theaters, mm -hmm. and they took me to that. So that one's always got a, a fun place in my heart. My aunts Beth and my aunt Sharon took me to that. And they've both passed since. Got it. Uh, Nick says down at the Abbey which I think is be a great name for a song itself uh, down at the Abbey. It was a monk monastery. So in the church, I played or old Gregorian music and got a lot of good results. And then out at three bridge, I played uh Arapo or Cheyenne native American music. We haven't really even talked about the, the use of music as what we call trigger objects on an investigation uh, because I've I've done an investigation for those who uh, go like know where the PNA Hall is uh, next to the Ritz Theater. I did an investigation of the PNA Hall, and that's you know a Polish American Polish National Association or affiliation, excuse me. Um, and so we played polka music there to see if we can get any uh, spirit uh, interaction, which was which was very interesting. And and people do that on investigations. Yeah, and you know what what triggered me on this question when i initially saw it to pass it on to you and like this would be a great one for the for the show was the first thing that popped to my mind was singing bowls and how yeah. many people use those to open up a gateway totally totally uh let's see here um we have kind of kind of here we got a couple more that we can get to uh let's see alicia says uh yes when my son passed we never got to say goodbye due to it being tragic i'm so sorry alicia uh i constantly heard the song Every breath you take by the police, everywhere I went, it followed me. I intuitively picked up. It was my son saying he will be with me, which um, is it. That's powerful. It really is. Yes. Uh, John says uh, the graceful ghost rag by William Bolcom. He wrote it shortly after the death of his father and said that he felt his father was always nearby while composing it. Hard not to think the same while listening to it. I have not heard that myself, uh, but uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out and 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 grab it, and and see see what it's like. Uh, let's see here. Going over to another page here. Uh, see if I can find it. Of course, I can't. Uh, that's just how these things uh, work. Let me just take one last look real fast. Give me one second here. There we go. Uh, we got um, Jan. She says, yes, yes, yes. When I play certain songs, I could connect to my son, who had also passed away. Uh, the energy and feeling it brings to the surface can help connect us to those we love. Or say playing certain drum beats can connect to us Native Americans or other tribes. Even going to church songs in him connects us to higher spirits. I believe the energy of songs in spots like bars, churches, or any other place can trigger spirits to come out Music is a special energy line. So it's that's really interesting. Everything just blinked in here. Or like did you just or did you just blink and you No, everything just literally blinked in here. Well, there you go. Oh, we're still in the air. There you go. Uh so and then one other one other thing. I was dating a a girl uh a couple years ago. Her name was Anise. And uh, she, when I met her, she had um, she had some some stuff that was going on dark in her house, and it would play like it's there. Her Alexa would play music from the song from the '30s that if you go to other Alexas, it wouldn't play, and it was just a kind of a creepy song. I remember that one. It wasn't Blue Sunday, was it? I don't think so. I don't there think so. There's this urban legend that there's an old song called Blue Sunday that like drives people mad. Mm. This uh, this all had to do with a friend of hers who um, was more into darker stuff and ended up uh, taking her own life, and uh, still would 
would uh, kind of glom on to uh, her. So that was that was a long, long time ago, and I think that all got taken care of. That's where I, I gave I gave her a bottle of uh, of what you call it, um, Florida water. And one night, the bottle, the liquid inside turned red, and I have pictures of it. What? Yeah, yeah. That's how that works. Uh, <laughs> that's just like, yeah, that's some that's some uh, very creepy stuff for sure. So that's uh, scarier than the Conjuring flicks. Just that. I know, I know. It's uh, it's one of those things that uh, uh, she and and she would send me videos of stuff that was happening in her house, and uh, she, it was legit. Let's just put it that way. Right? Talk about it, a red flag. <laughs> yeah. Well, she got the help she need. That's all. At the end of the day. That's all that mattered. Now, as we wrap as we wrap up the week, don't forget on Monday we're going to have on author Heidi Hollis as we talk about shadow people. Uh, please make sure to visit Ghost Box Radio and find past episodes of our radio shows and like us over on Facebook at Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. Also, send any comments or feedback to comment at ghostboxradio.com. Don't forget to check out the best of Ghost Box Radio airing Saturdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 4 p.m. on AM 950 Radio. And finally, whether you're chasing spirits or just drinking them tonight, please be careful out there. We'll see you Monday as we talk with Heidi Hollis. We're going to be talking about shadow people. Adam, thank you very much for everything and everyone. Have a great weekend and take care. Come on, you know it's true. Work is almost bearable when the Stephanie Miller Show is on. AM 950 KTNF, St. Louis Park, Minneapolis, St. Paul, the progressive voice of Minnesota. If you news, I'm Ben Thomas.